Hello everyone and welcome back to Narch TV. So today begins the first of many episodes called Switch to Linux, where I'll be exploring the world of GNU slash Linux. So cue the intro. I think that went very, very You are watching Narch TV. So in this first episode, we have a real fight on our hands. Unlike that bullshit Logan Paul and KSI fight, which was an absolute scam to take money from their prepubescent audiences. I'm talking about the heavyweight championship in the Linux world. Number one Manjaro versus number two Linux Mint. Ooh. So if you noticed, I made a comparison between Ubuntu and Manjaro a while back. And this video is going to be more or less the same compared to that one. Except we will be examining these distros side by side so you can make the right choice. <coughs> Install Gen 2. <coughs> but in all seriousness, before we begin this scientific test on these distros, let me tell you a little bit about them. Linux Mint is based off of Ubuntu, while Manjaro is based off of Arch. For this test, both are using the Cinnamon desktop environment, which is a similar look and feel to Windows. Although, these distros both have alternative environments if you are allergic to cinnamon. I will leave links in the description to the distro watch pages of each distro as well as the download link for each. Now with all that boring shit out of the way, let's go right to the tests. Installation. So let us begin with the installation of these two distributions. On Manjaro you have a nice welcome to Manjaro screen, while on Linux Mint you have to click the icon. These two have different installers due to their base distributions being so different. With Manjaro, you have the Calamaris installer, which isn't a specific um, distribution installer since it comes with a wide variety of uh, distributions. But on the Linux Mint side, you have the Ubiquity installer, which is commonly known as the Ubuntu installer because every Ubuntu distribution uses this installer. I think except for KDE Neon, which um, uses their own type of installer. So it has all of your basic, you know, plug in your information, your name, make a username, name of the PC, you know, passwords, um, partitioning, and all that. But personally, I really like the uh, Calamaris installer for its simple, easy to use, yet customizable uh, layout, as um, it also gives you a summary of what you're about to do before actually committing to it, which I think is very helpful because if a user just starts screwing up, like didn't read it correctly, they can go back um, and you can, they can see what they're about to do. While on the Ubiquity installer, it just installs it and it just assumes that you've done everything correctly. However, where the Ubiquity installer does come into one of my favorite things is that it offers every necessary package on the ISO image. So you do not need an active internet connection like Manjaro. Pretty much every Arch distribution, and I think all of them, you have to have an active internet connection to install this. So depending on if your PC has the correct drivers or if you don't have an ethernet slot, um, it could just be, you know, you're going to have to purchase a Wi-Fi adapter or you're going to hook into ethernet on your main PC to install Manjaro. While on Linux Mint, you can install without having any issues with uh, online connectivity. As you can see, um, I didn't run these, you know, I didn't sync these 100%, but uh, Manjaro seemed to be just as fast as Linux Mint while pulling everything off the internet, which means, um, in my personal opinion, I am going to give Manjaro the uh, win here while Linux Mint falls just a tiny bit behind with pretty much the same installer that has been used for a long time and is, you know, somewhat slow and just somewhat dated in my opinion.
So here we are on the login screen for both of these distributions. Both of them offer a nice and sleek um, login screen as well as the ability to switch your desktop environments which um, experienced users will most likely do but for the beginner you're probably just going to stick with the one desktop environment. First you will see that Linux Mint um, loads up first after signing in um, but this isn't a real test on speed um, because depending on your hardware, Manjaro might boot up faster than Linux Mint. It just all depends on what. But they're in the margin of error, so that's basically a tie. Um, the welcome screen on Linux Mint was not shown for some reason. I don't know why I didn't show it, um, but the welcome to Manjaro screen is quite easy and streamlined for a new user. Both of these do offer a Windows-like experience, as you can see here, with a start menu, which has all of your applications categorized in categories, with um, a favorites and shutdown uh, icons on the left-hand side, as well as a search feature for you to search all kinds of things. There's also a show desktop button, um, but they are placed a little differently. Manjaro's has it after the um, little group clustered of applications or most recent applications or most used rather. Um, Linux Mint is before, Manjaro is after, but Manjaro also offers a workspace switcher unlike um, Linux Mint here. But I'm pretty sure you can add that on Linux Mint if you really need that. Um, of course, there are more settings on the uh, lower right-hand side for volume and updates and all kinds of stuff. Um, but Manjaro has a lot more features um, built into that. So if you're looking for more on that right-hand side, then you have a lot more, you know, ability feature-wise on Manjaro. But Linux Mint is quite easy, and you know is you know, so streamlined to be as beginner friendly as possible that um, it allows, you know, you know, the average user of a, a Linux distribution, um, you know, might want those extra features, but somebody who's just switching is just going to want a nice and streamlined um, experience. And with both of these distributions and both of their desktop environments offers a great alternative to the Windows-like desktop environment. So this is why I give this section a tie. Neither one, you know, edging each other out because it's pretty much the same thing. Updates. Updating these two systems is as easy as cake with um, both having very easy methods of installing your updates. However, the easier one is Manjaro in this case because it is all packaged in with the package manager. However, if you do choose the Ubuntu side, you do have your very own update tool as well as um, your own driver tool. But for everything that you need, Manjaro has it all in its package manager as well as in the terminal. So it is extremely easy. With both of these systems being so different, um, I will leave a link for all the terminal commands that you will also need um, if you are switching from Windows and or another Linux distribution. The terminal commands um, will be linked in the description of this video. Software. Installing applications to these two distributions are quite easy. It just depends on what you are looking for. If you're looking for a more streamlined and user-friendly experience, I would recommend using Linux Mint because most of the applications that you would think would work on Linux do on Linux Mint just because of its Ubuntu base and since Ubuntu is very popular, most applications will run on Linux Mint. However, that is not to say that they won't run on Arch. With the Arch user repository, you can find nearly every application that will work on Linux Mint and or any other system work just greatly and perfectly on Arch. But just depending on what kind of um, experience you want, whether you want the nice user-friendly one or the not so nice looking but more convenient one 
is totally up to you. In my opinion, I personally like the graphical um, interface with the Linux Mint package manager. However, I do like how you can install um, from the Arch user repository in the terminal and also in your package manager. Just as simple and easy. Using Yart, you can find pretty much everything that you can think of, whether it is drivers, whether it is applications, whether it is, you know, other types of software. You can find in Yart very, very easily with just typing in Yart, whatever it is. And it's very easy to find. And if you can't find it in Yart, you can even look it up on the internet and on the AUR wiki will probably have a page showing you that it is the package is called this instead of this. Um, hence why it was kind of weird at first to try and install um, my particular web browser that I use every day um, because um, it was called something different than what I thought it was. Instead of it just being Chrome, it was called Google Chrome. Um, which both of these systems do support, which we will see in the next test. But safe to say, um, the beginner would more likely float to Linux Mint for installing software, while your average computer user looking for convenience over style will probably pick Manjaro. So I'm going to give the nod to Manjaro. Web browsing. web browsing on both of these distributions are done very simple and very easily with both of them coming with Firefox pre-installed. However, I do prefer what Manjaro does compared to Linux Mint. Linux Mint custom search is a bit dated looking in my opinion and just isn't, you know, I just don't like it. Um, even going to a default, um, you know, start window, it already selects Yahoo as your default search engine on Linux Mint, which, no. You either choose DuckDuckGo or Google. Most people picking Google. And Manjaro, even on Firefox, uses Google as the default search engine. But I prefer Google Chrome anyway. So I installed Google Chrome on both of these systems to do most of my web testing and found that on the system that I tried them both on, which it wasn't the same system I tried my other comparison on. In fact, these were done a little bit differently with a little bit less RAM and a little bit less horsepower, um, which my computer doesn't have much of. You could see that um, both of these um, loaded Chrome completely fine and you could search up um, both the distros pages completely fast and easy Let's view some images and of course later on watch some video in HD um, depending on your your power of your PC um, you could probably you know you can watch whatever I mean in this test it may look a little sluggish but that's just because of the hardware um, depending on your hardware um, is how fast your browsing speed is going to be um, but functionality wise um, Firefox works great and Google Chrome works even better. In fact, um, I can't really um, decide a winner um, other than by, you know, the default web browser, which Manjaro offers a better 
Firefox experience than Linux Mint in my opinion because number one, Yahoo is not what I would consider a good search engine. Um, Chrome is acceptable unless you want more privacy. I would recommend DuckDuckGo as a power user, but here everything works 100% ready to go. Videos play fine on YouTube and I have no complaints with web browsing. So that right there is web browsing with these two distributions. So now I'm going to leave you now with my final thoughts of these two distributions. So what do I think? Well, both of these distros offer the best of what the Linux world has to offer. From easiest crap installations, a good environment for people moving from Windows, brain dead easy update tools, great software and very good user bases, and great browsing for those who ship posts on Reddit or 4chan. It's too hard to pick a winner in my opinion. So let me know in the comments which one you think is better. And also comment what distros you want me to try or compare next. In the next episode, I'll grow a pair and try a Gen 2 based distro for the very first time. So stay tuned for that one. It's going to be a great video. God, what the hell am I getting myself into? Thank you so much for watching this comparison. I hope you learned some stuff and enjoyed this goofy little comparison. I'll be doing more videos like this, so hit that like button and subscribe button so you can see more videos just like this one. And until next time... Uh, did I say and? God damn... Until next time... Thank you for watching Norwich TV.